We received news this morning that O.J. Simpson has died at the age of 76. His family announced the news on Simpson's active X account. It reads in part, on April 10th, our father, Orenthal James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. During this time of transition, his family asks that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace. TMZ reporting that OJ had been battling prostate cancer in recent years. His health recently took a turn for the worst. Back in February, he denied rumors that he was in hospice care. Hey, X-World, hospice? Hospice? You talking about hospice? <laughs> no, I, I'm not in any hospital. I don't know who put that out there, but whoever put that out there, I guess it's like the Donald Singh. Can't trust the media. That was the thing about O.J. Simpson. On camera, publicly facing, jolly, good-natured, smiling, easy to like. It's one of the reasons he became such a star and why America fell in love with him when he was rising to prominence. He began uh, winning the Heisman Trophy and breaking all sorts of records at USC, then went on to become a star NFL running back with the Buffalo Bills, uh, and then went on to become a, a, a very famous actor in commercials and movies like the Naked Gun movies. Frank, over there! But he truly became one of the most famous or infamous people in the world in 1994. 30 years ago, when he was charged with the murder of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman, in Los Angeles, in a pair of absolutely gruesome stabbings. The children Nicole and OJ shared together from their marriage were steps away inside the house and were just eight and five years old at the time of her death. They were asleep in the house while their mother was being murdered outside. The slow-moving car chase with O.J.'s white Bronco that happened soon thereafter as police closed in on him as their lead suspect, who they wanted to arrest, became an iconic moment, again, in American history, followed by his subsequent arrest. People remember where they were when they watched that. But the trial that would come captivated the nation for months on end, even more so than the slow Bronco, making not only OJ, but so many other characters, household names to this day. Marsha Clark, the prosecutor in this case, who is a regular here on The Megyn Kelly Show, in her opening statement, she detailed the brutality of the killings. I warn you, this is graphic. And there he saw a sight that he'll never forget. He saw the body of Nicole Brown lying at the foot of the steps in a pool of blood. Officer Risky went all the way up to the uh, end of the walkway in the bushes to where to a point where he was able to see at that point that it was not just Nicole, but also Ron. We did warn you, ladies and gentlemen, that this was a case that was going to have photographs that would be very, very hard to look at. We have to show you the evidence, and I apologize for the graphic nature of them, but this is the crime that we're here to examine. No one will argue about what the cause of death was for Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown. Indeed, it was stated repeatedly by the prosecution that Nicole Brown Simpson was nearly decapitated. So brutal was the attack that she suffered. OJ's lawyer, Johnny Cochran, of course, famously, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. You know the phrase, thanks to him, saying that gloves found at the scene could not possibly have been OJ's because when OJ was asked by the prosecution, Chris Darden, Marsha's co-counsel, to try them on, they did not fit. And he made a showing of it. They had been treated, they had been wet, and then they had dried and gotten smaller. We've heard the lawyers talk about it since as a complete blunder. By the, by the prosecution. Uh, the judge, Lance Ito, another name known coast to coast. Witnesses, Cato Kalin. Still, most Americans who are Gen Xers at least know these names. 
In the end, O.J. was found not guilty in 1995 in the criminal case in a decision that split the country right in two. Another moment where most of us remember we were when the verdict came down. Yours truly, I had just begun my career as a lawyer. I watched the trial as a third-year law student along with everybody else. We were riveted. We would go to our classes in the after in the morning and then in the afternoon we'd gather in the student center and watch it on one of those old fat TVs that we were all watching in 1994 before they all got slimlined. And then in 1995 came down the verdict and we all gathered, this time for me, it was in my law firm, all white lawyers, one black receptionist. And they said, not guilty. And the white lawyers stood there stunned and our black receptionist, who we all loved, was cheering. And it was just a microcosm of what was happening all across America at that moment. And one of those moments in which people started to get it, that there was a massive distrust of police, especially within the black community, especially in LA, uh, that the white community wasn't feeling. And that this evidence and this case and these accusations, strong as they were, were being viewed very differently by citizens across this country. OJ would later be sued by Ron Goldman's family for wrongful death in a civil court where the burden of proof is lower than it is in a criminal court. And indeed, uh, that jury found him responsible, liable for the double murders in 1997. That was not the end of OJ's legal troubles. Many years later, in 2008, he was found guilty of kidnapping and armed robbery related to a sports memorabilia scam that he was running in Las Vegas. The Goldmans were able to garnish his wages forevermore after that verdict, and he was trying to get out of paying, they alleged, and trying to find ways of earning money, potentially off the books. He was sentenced for that crime to 33 years in prison. Many believed the sentence was so hefty, not for that crime, but in payment of an earlier one. He was released in 2017 for good behavior, and went on to have a rather large presence on social media, uh, posting videos like the ones I showed you where he's all smiles, he's in good humor. And that's the thing about O.J. Simpson. His personality was effervescent. There was something likable about the guy and the way he related to us all. But O.J. Killer, O.J. Simpson, in my view, was a killer. He was a double murderer just as that civil jury said. And the fact that he had great lawyers who pointed out some failings of the prosecution in its case, that didn't change that, not for me and not for millions of Americans. I'm sorry, but I don't think you can look back at this man's legacy and remember much more than that. Yeah, he was a great football player. He was a good actor. He had a great personality. And he killed brutally two people, including the mother of his very young children. And that is what most of us will remember O.J. Simpson for. Do you owe back taxes? Pandemic relief is now over. Along with hiring thousands of new agents and field officers, the IRS has kicked off 2024 by sending over 5 million pay-up letters to those who have unfiled tax returns or balances owed. Don't waive your rights and speak with them on your own. Tax Network USA, a trusted tax relief firm, has saved over $1 billion in back taxes for their clients, and they can help you secure the best deal possible. Whether you owe 10 grand or 10 million, they can help you. Whether it's business or personal taxes, even if you have the means to pay or you're on a fixed income, they can help finally resolve your tax burdens once and for all. Call 1-800-245-6000 for a private free consultation or visit tnusa.com slash Megan. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.